secured party creditor process and most of it was based on redemption manual 4.5 and this is from there so once you have in my at awesome www.awesomeproducts.22.com I do have the cover letters I have the bill of exchange the birth certificate um, that's just with the stamp um, the birth certificate bond UCC1 and the 1040 and in the in the playlist of the secured party creditor process um, you would have to go through that and if you want any of the templates you can go to the awesome products22.com and get them but they say organize your documents from bottom to top so you have to put the cover letters bill of exchange the birth certificate the bond the UCC one the 1040 ES um, so make sure you go through the videos so you learn how to do that and then right here this address this wouldn't be Timothy Geiser to Geiser it would be Janet Yellen you make sure you put that in there and you you organize it like this and you send it to right to this address here um, yeah Fifteen hundred, yeah, yeah. You can send it right there. Make sure you do tracking, and let's see. Let's see what else. Yeah, it's the same address. You could put. Um, I've also seen some people put UCC contract, contract, account. If you want to reference that, but you put the, the the documents in that order, and then you send it to the treasury. There's the address, and um, that's it. You just make sure I would do certified mail or registered mail um, on the bond. They do recommend that you use registered mail number because that monetizes it. Um, one way, if you can't get a registered mail number, you could also just use that and send everything registered mail, and then you'll be able to track that. If you can't get one, if you can't get the post office to give you one, you could just, um, you go to USPS and you go to customer service online and you open a, like you message them and tell them, you know, I'm trying to get these registered mails because I'm sending legal documents and they wouldn't give them to me at my post office. Can you please give them to me? And I, they will like, I, I had them, they told me that they were going to give me some. I haven't gone over there to get it yet, but they said they would order them for me. I just had to give my post office location and then I could go pick it up. So, and then over here you need the two sureties or the two witnesses. Um, with the thumbprints so once you're done you've done all the documents you know go through all the videos if you need the if you need the you know templates you can go to the awesome products 22.com get whatever templates you need then just mail them off in this order and then you're done with the chargeback process once you get your green card back then you can do the treasury direct account so you might have already done it but what that's what how they recommend doing it once you get the green card back and then after this there's another this was like the way that a lot of people have done it the redemption manual 4.5 there is another they have another latest version which is 5.0 and that one has a common law trust in it and I'll probably be posting that process to my website. Um, that full process with templates and documents later. Um, you could restructure this one if you want. In in, in a pretty much has the same things. You just would have to redo it if you want. But you could still use this this process and do trusts with it too. The reason why I didn't post that one is because with that, you have to know about trust law and everything else. 
and a lot of people ha did it this way and they still have it done this way um, if you want to get more advanced and reach into trust law and estates and all that other stuff which your estate is pretty much you in this in this instant you're considered the estate and your your trust they already have a trust for you right so you have to learn about those things and they're more extensive but this is the basic um, you know secured party creditor process which is pretty much everything but without all like the more advanced stuff which you do need to know about trusts and all that stuff but a lot of people have functions like this with this one this way for a long time and then just add stuff to it as they learn more so yeah I mean I do recommend trying to get this book I mean it does uh, give you more information it's like as you can see it's 682 pages and you can find it online so yeah good luck guys um, later on maybe I'll probably post like how to open a Treasury direct account uh, for anybody that wants to see that and and as far as the discharging process even though I've had success I've had a lot of people talk about, you know, the problems that they've come across. I had some success, right? And then with other ones, it's kind of like it went nowhere. So, but I've had people talk about how their account got restricted or stuff like that. And I'm not saying that that process is the best process. There's also the accepted for value process, which mostly I believe is done on the private side which would be done directly to the treasury and you'd need to read um, the redemption manual just basically it does talk about bill of exchange all that study you do have to study um, and so I'm just this is like the first part doing the secured party creditor how to use it one thing I did find out um, you know you know with the UCC one you can put liens well you can protect all your assets and your name is an asset I did have someone threaten one of the members of my family and I was able to put there because it's one of my offspring and this person that I had was somebody that makes empty threats and they really don't follow through but since they're a little wacky a little crazy um, I didn't know if they were actually going to follow through or not, so I ended up putting my offspring. I, they say offspring because they say they use that word instead of children or something. I put one of them on there. I actually put both of them on there. I have two girls. And um, to protect her name and all that other stuff. And basically the person was making threats, so I sent them a notice, a legal notice, because that's the first thing you do in the legal process. You have to put somebody on notice so um, and I did say like if you run my offspring's name you know and I sent them the fee schedule if you know about fee schedules um, some people do have them posted out there and they do charge pretty high fees um, it was like for running the name it was like fifty thousand dollars so and it even has things like um, on that fee schedule, it had like if you were in jail, you had, they would have to pay you $75,000 an hour. So basically, once you do the security agreement, you have it notarized and you have your UCC1 and it, it, there's a notice to lean on it, you're leaned. And now you can, if anybody tries to threaten you or take action against you, especially if it's on a if it's the government and stuff, I don't know how that works, but if it's like just a regular person trying to take action, you can just send them a notice say, well, please don't run my information. Otherwise, I'll have to put you on the UCC one and put a lien on you. And then that pretty much becomes a bill that they have to pay. So you do have to research how to do all that. Um, yeah, so it, it, you know, it helps with asset protection. So as I learn more about it, I will post it. And that that's all for today. Have a good day. Bye.